This program is a part of a series of studies that our Pastor Gion has prepared for you. Welcome to Victory Church Odessa. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith by reflecting on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our Pastor Gian. Gospel Parallels, Episode 27 today, May 17, 2023. Bible Study with Victory Church, Odessa. And I am Gian, the founding pastor of this church, and I say hello to you, especially today that I am dedicating this study to our dear, faithful viewer, followers, church member, Amelia Cameron. Amelia, you are wonderful. We love when you are making comments and you are doing likes, loves, and all that. You are fantastic. I hope to see you soon again in the church, and uh, this episode is dedicated to you, dear friend. Many blessings in your life. There you go. Gospel Parallels is a wonderful study that we have done here in Victor Church for quite some time. It's a, a study about the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that we are going through them chronologically. And we switch each one of them because not all of them have everything that the, others, the other Gospels say. So... I want to invite you, if you want to check the previous episodes, to go to our website, vchurch.us, and connect with all our video platforms. Our app channels are available for you. Gian TV is what you search, whether it's using your Roku TV device or Apple TV device or Amazon Fire Stick device. Also, of course, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. For the audio platforms, for those who prefer audio platforms, everything begins with the podcast. And you go to vchurch.us, you will find a way to connect with the podcast and Spotify, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, and our favorite Victory Radio, because it's the new thing. What happened in our previous episode? Well, we study the ministry of the Lord Jesus in Galilee, the four Gospels talk about that. That was episode 26. Today we are going to reflect on his preaching at Nazareth. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they talk about it. John doesn't say anything about this. The reading comes from the easy-to-read version. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this study. Amen. Okay, Jeho. Full screen now, the readings. And here we go. Matthew 13, 53 through 58. When Jesus finished teaching with these stories, he left there. He went to the town where he grew up. He taught the people in the synagogue, and they were very amazed. They said, where does this man get such wisdom and this power to do miracles? Isn't it he, the son of the carpenter we know? Isn't it his mother's name Mary, and aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? <laughs> and uh, don't all his sisters still live here in town? Who, how, how, how is he able to do these things? So they had a problem accepting him. But Jesus said to them, People everywhere give honor to a prophet, but in his own town or in his own home. A prophet does not get any honor. Jesus did not do many miracles there because the people did not believe in him. Mark 6, 1 through 6a. Jesus left and went back to his hometown. His followers went with him. On the Sabbath day, Jesus taught in the synagogue and many people heard him. They were amazed and said, where did this man get this teaching? How did he get such wisdom? Who gave it to him? And uh, where did he get the power to do miracles? <laughs> Isn't it he just a carpenter we know? Mary's son, 
the brother of James, Joseph, or Joseph, Joseph, Judas and Simon? And don't his sisters still live here in town? So they had a problem accepting him. Then Jesus said to him, to them, People everywhere give honor to a prophet, except in his own town, with his own people, or in his own home. Jesus was not able to do many any miracles there except the healing of some sick people by laying his hands on them. He was surprised that the people there had no faith. Luke 4, 16 through 30. Jesus traveled to Nazareth, the town where he grew up. On the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue as he always did. He stood up to read. The book of Isaiah, the prophet, was given to him. He opened the book and found the place where this is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has chosen me to tell good news to the poor. He sent me to tell prisoners that they are free and to tell the blind that they can see again. He sent me to free those who have been treated badly and to announce that the time has come for the Lord to show his kindness. Jesus closed the book, gave it back to the helper, and sat down. As everyone in the, in the synagogue watched him closely, he began to speak to them. He said, While you heard me reading these words just now, they were coming true. Everyone there said good things about Jesus. They were amazed to hear him speak such wonderful words. They said, How is this possible? Isn't he Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, I know you will tell me the old saying, Doctor, heal yourself. You want to say, We heard about the things you did in Capernaum. Do those same things here in your own hometown. <laughs> then he said, The truth is, a prophet is not accepted in his own hometown. During the time of Elijah, it did not rain in Israel for three and a half years. There was no food anywhere in the whole country. There were many widows in Israel during that time. But the fact is, Elijah was sent to none of those widows in Israel. He was sent only to a widow in Zerapath, a town in Sidon. And there were many people with leprosy living in Israel during the time of the prophet Elisha, but none of them were healed. The only one was Naaman, and he was from the country of Syria, not Israel. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were very angry. They got up and forced Jesus to go out of town. Their town was built on a hill. They took Jesus to the edge of the hill to throw him off, but he walked through the middle of the crowd and went away. I remember being a child, listening to my father reading stories to us. Also, I remember my mother telling us stories while we were listening to those stories, my brothers, my sister, and I, we had a great time. Later in church, when I went to church being a kid, I started going to church at seven years old. I remember the same thing. The stories were fascinating to me. And I can't imagine being around the Lord Jesus and He is telling stories, parables, anecdotes, it's just something special about that, you know. In fact, I know that many of you enjoy watching movies because there are great stories, and particularly, the, particularly those that are true stories. I know some of you love to watch, right? <laughs> that was one of the methods the Lord Jesus used to teach. He was a storyteller, and it's a wonderful thing. He came back to his hometown and um, one of the things that he used to do is that every Saturday like good like any other good Jew he was going to the synagogue it was his custom like most Jews going to the synagogue to hear God's word to say their prayers and spend good time with everybody else there because we have to 
understand the importance of devoting one day. People have asked me many times, why do we believers, Christians, we meet on Sunday rather than meeting on Saturday? And the answer to that question is, we will meet any day, in fact. We have meetings, especially after the health crisis of 2019, any day. Many people go to their worship services and to Bible studies and prayer meetings anytime and actually any day of the week. But if there is a preference, of course, for us here in the west part of the world, since we have Sunday off, well, why not, right? It is a custom to say that Sunday is the day of the Lord because it's the day that He, He came back to life. He has risen on a Sunday. Also, it's important to consider, but what is more important is that we worship Him in spirit and truth. I spoke about that in previous episode. Now, well, while the Lord Jesus is there in the synagogue teaching, and people are amazed of His teachings, they were wondering about that. How is it that He is get this knowledge? What is the source of this knowledge? <laughs> How is it possible? And not just the knowledge, but is the power because many of them, they were witness or even heard and lived testimonies of powerful miracles that Lord Jesus performed in other places. They were really curious. But some of them, they were questioning how legitimate this could be. And the way to question it was about his parents and his family and his occupation. Listen, that is very strange. I want to talk to you about those people that love to question everybody else. And let me tell you, it's one of the, the things that I, I have seen creates a lot of problem because through questioning, they can get people in trouble. Listen, everyone is curious. I am curious. I want to know. I have been a curious person all my life. But it, there is a big difference between being curious about things and questioning somebody. Because sometimes questioning probably is just a way to try to control and manipulate situations. A legitimate question, I believe, is a good thing. Questions are important to, to make things clear. But the tone of the question here, that is my point to you. Be careful when you are questioning because the tone of your question and, and the reasoning behind the question already tells us what is your intention. So watch out. Isn't it he the son of Joseph and Mary? And? <laughs> What's the problem with that? Are you going to tell me that being the son of someone that is not popular or famous or rich or whatever is a crime? It's a bad thing? Well, by asking that question is exactly the intention behind isn't he just a carpenter? <laughs> really? And what that has to do with anything? He has an occupation that we already know that the Lord Jesus was a responsible person. So what's wrong with being a carpenter? Interesting, huh? You noticed? But because the Lord God allows all those things, he allowed those questions because the most important question came afterwards is, it's about the brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus. Because this is the important question here for us. For them, it was just another way to try to put him down. <laughs> you know, because let's suppose you are the son of people that are, let's say, not famous, not wealthy, nor important in your town. Is that a crime? No. Let's suppose you have a profession, an occupation that is not that relevant in the community. Is that a crime? No. 
Th those two things do not disqualify you for serving God or even to run for office or anything, right? Now, the question about the brothers and sisters is interesting because imagine you have a brother that is a criminal, a drug dealer. <laughs> That's a problem, right? But even in that case, what that has to do with you? If you have a brother that is a bad guy, that doesn't mean you are a bad guy. Interesting, he right? Now, the, the siblings is not an issue. We know that. But the beauty is that here there is a record of the four brothers of the Lord Jesus and at least two sisters. Matthew 13, 55 and Mark 6, 3 are the scriptures that we have as a foundation. That's our, it's the scriptures that we can use to say, Mary was not always virgin. And with all respect to Mary, I love Mary. I always put Mary as an example of the kind of girl, daughter, wife, and mother. Because she was the one that the Lord God decided, I'm going to use to raise my son. So she was top of the line, right? But that doesn't mean that she was always virgin. She was virgin when she conceived the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. The only case in the whole history of humankind, glory to God, the Lord Jesus was perfect from the beginning because there was no sin in himself. He was pure, pure. But after that, Joseph and Mary, they were like any other couple that they had sex and as a result of that, there were many other children. At least we know four of these guys and two sisters, which is interesting that they say, are they still in town like, like what? So because they are sisters, they have to go and follow somebody? <laughs> Not necessarily, right? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We honor Mary. But first, we don't pray to Mary. The Lord Jesus told us, when you pray, you pray to the Father. You go to the to your room, you close the door, you pray to the Father. Anything you ask in my name, it's clear. When he prayed the Lord's Prayer, he talked to the Father. There is no record. There is no way to justify that we can or we should be praying to Mary or St. Joseph, or St. Peter, or St. whomever, for any other reason. That's, with all respect, it's an invention. It's literally an invention. And let me ask you, will you believe to a leader that is telling you to pray to somebody other than the Lord God, which is not the scriptural, can you trust this person for the rest of the doctrines? I won't. That's all that I have to say about that. Returning to the story, here is interesting, because the Lord Jesus was shocked, shocked with them. And he's like, really, guys? Well, I get it. You know, I get it. That's, that's how you are. And you don't want to believe in me. You have your problems. Well, if there is no faith... There are no, nor going to be any miracles. And that goes to you, my friend, today. Do you know why you probably will not receive miracles in your life? Because you don't have faith. Now, remember, one thing is God's will. Another thing is that you receive a miracle from God. Many things happen in life. Because it's God's will. There are accidents, there are illnesses, catastrophes, things that we just don't like about what happened, right? But that is just a fact. Things happen in life for good and bad people. And at the end, it's God's will. We need to accept His will. 
However, that doesn't mean that you cannot pray. But imagine, you are in the need of something for your family, for a friend, for yourself, health, provision, wisdom, understanding, finding the right church, finding the right pastor, your leader, your mentor, for example, where to buy a house or anything. And you want a miracle. If you don't have faith that God can do it, it's not going to happen. So let me explain something to you that is very important. Faith in God is believing that He can do it. So here is a wrong position about that. Listen to this. The wrong position is, I have the faith that God will do this. It's a wrong position. Why? Listen to the sentence. I have the faith. You see, the premise is wrong to begin with. I have the faith. You. The person is saying, that person has the faith. It's like, it's his attribute. Whatever happens is because I have the faith. Of course, you need to have faith. But the true faith is not something that you possess just simply because you possess it. You know? I have two ears. Well, I possess these two ears. But the Lord God gave me those ears. In all case, I can say, by the grace of God, I have two ears. I'm going to hear His word. I'm going to listen to anything around me. Right? But I cannot say, I have the faith that God will do this, because it's a wrong premise. The right premise for a statement or declaration of that type is this. The Lord God is able to do this and that. I have faith that the Lord God is able. In all case, if I have to say, I have the faith, I will say, I have the faith of what? That God can do this. That the Lord God is able. It's much better all the time when you are dealing with these questions in your mind. Do I pray for this? How do I pray? How do I know if this is God's will? The Lord God is going to talk to you. And He will tell you. He will lead you. There is a sense. Somehow it's a feeling. It's discernment. When you know this is His will. And sometimes you just say, Lord, I understand. Throughout the life of a believer, you will experience moment when, moments when even without things happening, the believer will hear the voice of the Lord, the Lord saying, this is going to happen. And it's not good. The believer must accept God's will. But can you still pray? Can you still say, Lord, could you change your mind? Of course you can. Can you receive the miracles? There are many examples in the scripture that even though the Lord said this is going to happen, he changed. There is the case of a, a king who received the word from God that he will he was about to die, king of Israel. And he prayed, and the Lord said, okay, I'm going to give you X number of years, more years of life. The miracle happened. Miracles happen all the time. But imagine in a place where there is no faith, in a house that there is no faith, if you have no faith, no miracles, my friend. Particularly when you have something against Jesus, especially when you have issues believing what the Bible says. So, miracles will happen every time there is faith. But listen, the Lord God is so merciful. The Lord Jesus, even though He noticed that there was no faith there, He saw that there were several people that were ill. And he lay his hands on them. And still, those ones received healing. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. Because the Lord God will move in different ways. And there is a moment, particularly in this scenario, when the Lord Jesus says, well, we are done here, guys. We need to go to the next town. We need to move forward, which is a very interesting thing that you need to understand in life. Moving forward, whatever happened, happened. You cannot continue living the same thing over and over again. That is why it's so important that you learn to forgive and forgive quickly and forgive and let it go. I want to share with you an interesting secret. It's interesting because it's actually real. It's a practice. But it's, it's a secret because I really don't share that pretty much ever. But I will tell you today something that helps you, will help you to forgive. Whenever you have a terrible incident, uh, you cannot just let it go quickly. I know that some of you say, you know, I just forget about it. But you don't forget about it. You keep thinking about it. So here's one cool strategy that will help you to forgive in, a, in order to be able to move forward. Even if they offended you, insulted you, any type of offense, any type of sin. First of all, remember, you have to be conscientious. I must forgive and let it go. So you pray. And you say something like this. Listen carefully. So you say, Dear God, right now, I want to forgive such and such because did this and that. And I don't want to have anything against such and such. So in this moment, in total honesty, before you, I want to tell you that I forgive this person such and such from the bottom of my heart for what he did or she did or they did. And in fact, I want to ask you, Lord, do not take into consideration those things that they did that hurt me. And even further, I want to ask you, Father, that you will give them a great day. That whatever happened is forgot, forgotten. And now you're going to give them a blessing. Something special that will happen to them. So I ask you, Lord, to give to such and such a beautiful day. In the name of Jesus, I just get rid of all these bad feelings, this hostility and animosity. And I ask you, Lord, help me to forget entirely this incident in Jesus' name. And after you pray, if the thing is was, it was really, really hard for you, take a shower. And while you are in the shower, you pray again, if you need the same prayer, until you feel totally clean physically, and then you go out, you put clean clothes, and then you get pretty again, get a cup of coffee, glass of water, whatever you like, and move forward. Do it. Now, interestingly, the, the story that the, the first two writers told us, Matthew and Mark, they were pretty similar. But Luke, he brings up a passage of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. That is the, the passage that, in fact, told us about the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon the Lord Jesus while he was in the synagogue, which makes the whole thing even more ceremonial, that has more value. Now, there are a couple of things that happened there while, while Jesus read this passage of Isaiah. Remember, he didn't say, okay, guys, here I am again. You know, I know many things. So give me such and such role. I'm going to read something because I, I, I have prepared something for you. Mm -mm. He was there sitting there. He was called and they gave him the role of the prophet Isaiah. <laughs> they gave him the role of the prophet Isaiah. So he opens the role of the prophet Isaiah and goes to this particular chapter 61 and he reads, 
this wonderful prophecy that later he says, this right now came true in your very presence. The power of the Holy Spirit was upon him. It's beautiful. In, in this passage, the Lord tells us the first thing that is the purpose of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because this is amazing, my friend. Try to follow, okay? The real purpose of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, first of all, it's about to share the good news to the poor. That's the first purpose. The first purpose is to be able to share the good news. Which are the good news? Well, there is hope in the name of Jesus to the poor. So what happens to the rich? The poor in general, my friend. Not just financially poor. You know that there are many people that they have money, but they are really poor. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally. They are actually in poverty because they are in darkness. So the first thing is the Lord Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit came upon me so I can share the good news with the poor. And I will set the prisoners free. Setting prisoners free. Prisoners of what? Of sin. Prisoners of sin. Not necessarily that he needed to go to the prison or jail. No. He's talking about sin. The poor is poor because he's a prisoner of sin. And then he says even, I want to heal the blind. I want the blind to be able to see again, which is interconnected because if the person is poor, meaning no spiritual life, of course is prisoner to sin, and of course is blind because can't see the truth. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit has the purpose of sharing the truth that there is hope in the name of Jesus. Also, to be able to share with those that are slaves to sin that you can be free. And third, those that can't see the truth will be able to see the truth because actually they live under oppression. I came here to set the oppressed ones free. Beautiful. They are oppressed. And that is the meaning of the time of God's grace. The anointing of the Holy Spirit has basically that purpose. Being able to share the good news with people, set them free with the truth. They will be able to see they are going to be released from oppression because this is the time for God's grace. And then after he said that, and let me tell you this, immediately he sat down. People were wondering, what is the meaning of this? And then he explained to them. He said, this scripture came true now. This prophecy, again, has been fulfilled. Bravo, Lord Jesus. Wonderful. I want you to know, for those that are preaching today, my friends that are reaching out, writing posts, creating context for their own social media platforms, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come to you when you are willing to fulfill exactly those purposes. It's a wrong idea, and I want to Say this again. It's a wrong idea for anyone who wants to have the anointing of the Holy Spirit just to show off. The power of the Holy Spirit is with me. So let me pray for you. Let me say this. You will see miracles, etc. No, that's not the purpose. The whole purpose of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, is precisely to do what the Lord Jesus did and said. The signs will come, my friend. The miracles will come. The power of God will come upon every honest preacher, minister, every servant of God that is sincerely searching for the salvation of souls is going to experience the power of God and the anointing of God. Returning to the story, 
here are the people in the synagogue now upset <laughs> because they saw they thought wait a minute are you telling us that you are that one i don't think so and then the lord said guys do you remember what happened to elijah and elisha two different prophets right do you remember what happened to them people are like what happened to them well before any anything that happened to elijah you need to remember there were three years and a half without rain in Israel, in the whole country. That is crisis, my friend. No food. That was crisis. And the Lord Jesus said, how many widows were in trouble in Israel during that time? Oh, I don't know, a lot. Yes, there were many. But how interesting is that the Lord God told Elijah to go to take care of a widow that was not part of the people of Israel. Interesting. And with Elijah was similar. There was a guy who was not a Jew, who was severely ill, and he came to find him because he was hoping for a miracle of healing by the influence of a young Israelite girl and his wife with the cooperation of one of his helpers. All that, all together, brought Naaman to the place where he was able to be healed. So the Lord Jesus tell these things to the, to the Jews in the synagogue, meaning, I already know that. You guys have always something against the prophets that belong to you, like me. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I get it. That infuriated the Jews in the synagogue, and they said, that's it. I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I'm going to get you now. Come on, guys. Let's get him. And they took the Lord Jesus to the edge of the hill. They wanted to throw him down, to kill him. The beautiful part of this, my friend, is that we know the Lord Jesus came to die for us, and he knew it. But that was not the way. And he will not let those people just get away with whatever they want. He, he allowed them. Okay, okay. you want to take me there? Take me there. You, you aren't going to do anything to me. And when they are in the edge and they are thinking, oh, we got him, we got him. Here is the Lord Jesus walking through the middle of the crowd. And they couldn't do anything about it. Because it doesn't matter what people try to do online, politicians, entrepreneurs, supervisors, school principals, district, representatives, any type of authorities in this world, any type of person trying to stop Jesus' movement, Christianity, and the gospel of the Lord, any and each one of them and all of them are going to see how the Lord Jesus will prevail. Because He has, He is, and He will be the conqueror of all times. And he walked through the crowd. And I can imagine the looks they gave him. Can you imagine that? And he humbly, but with confidence, walked through them without fear. Because he knew that they would not be able to touch him. If you, my friend are serving God the right way. If you are doing the right thing, I promise you, everything is going to be all right. Even if people try to attack you, even if your supervisor, your boss, your whomever authority in your life is trying to stop you to preach the gospel and talk about Jesus, the Lord is going to give you the strength. You just need to be wise about that. You need to respect the context where you are. You are not going to go against the law. Preaching where you don't, are not supposed to. 
because you don't want to be killed. Listen carefully to this. You don't need to provoke the law or the officials of the law to get you and destroy you. You need to be smart, but you are not going to be fearful either, frightened. Sometimes people can be mean and try to attack you and insult you and try to put you in the corner. Sometimes people try to do those type of things. But remember, nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> Just kidding. Nobody is going to stop the Lord Jesus, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the Bible, the church, the kingdom of God, and you as a servant of God. Nobody will be able to stop you. As long as you are doing the right thing. And be wise. Don't just go like crazy attacking people. No. Be smart. Be prudent with your words and your actions. But you must be, you must be gracious, confident, speaking the truth in love. In the name of Jesus. So this is what we have today here for you in this beautiful episode 27, Gospel Parallels. I invite you to go to Victory Church, vchurch.us, and from there connect with the rest of the platforms. Thank you for being here, and I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, MyNewMentor.com. Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. Do you like new movies, new books, new music? Go to MyGianCarlo.com. There is a new album, Adore, 10 songs. I wrote the songs and I sing those songs with a wonderful band of musicians and singers. If you sign up in MyGiancarlo.com, I will give you one song for free. Take advantage of this free song and enjoy this wonderful production. The blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing. 
God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.